Welcome to the winter edition of the Yummery News Network. We're here on Oahu in the state of Hawaii honoring our veterans on the 75th anniversary of the attacks of Pearl Harbor. You know, we started this quarter out on a really motivating note with the Young Marine Leadership Symposium in Washington, D.C. Young Marines from around the country, our top leaders, many of your fellow Division Young Marines of the Year that you competed with last year, were all there to give us some of their great ideas. I mean, that was your show. Tell me all about it. You know, sir, we started at National Leadership Academy this year. As soon as we knew who the top 10 were, we got them in a group, and we made sure they knew what we were doing. We then proceeded to get their emails, uh, Google Drive, uh, group me and slack and we put all of our ideas together. I don't know what half of it is he's saying. All I know is they coordinated electronically all summer. You were a harsh taskmaster getting all those ideas and concepts in to bring to us. Absolutely sir and the young marines they worked real hard and they all put in a lot of effort. Each one had at least three ideas and all of those ideas were very thought out and thorough and as we went into the symposium we decided whether we wanted to continue with those ideas or scrap them. And we ended up with a lot of great ideas that came out of that. And then we continued to discuss them and debate on what we wanted to do. It was a hard keep. debate. You, you all were up late night, both nights, working all day long on that. And just some great ideas. And so much of it generated from the field, from feedback from young Marines all around the country. Yes, sir. All of our young Marines that went there, they were all listening to their young Marines. They gathered from their units. Um, and from their regiments, battalions, and divisions, and got what they could and brought it to us. And that's where we got a lot of our ideas from. And then we just built on them and how we thought we could make them better. So I think what we're trying to tell the young Marines too is every year, always bring up ideas and concepts through your chain of command, your young Marine adult leaders and your young Marine leadership, like young Marine Sergeant Major Bacon, because those great ideas are what are gonna to continue to grow our program and make it even better in the years to come. You know, the dust never settles on the Young Marine program because we moved right from the Leadership Symposium into the kickoff of Red Ribbon Week. And this year we were honored to have one of our very own, Mr. Joe Lusignan, our Deputy Director of the West Coast Operations and Drug Demand Reduction Officer, was asked to be the kickoff speaker and moderator for this year's Red Ribbon Week kickoff at the Drug Enforcement Agency headquarters in Washington, D.C. Mr. Lusignan did a great job not only introducing the concept of being the MC, but also bringing in the support that the Young Marines program brings to drug demand reduction efforts across the country. Good job, Deputy Joe. Red Ribbon Week activities occurred all across the country, and I'm really happy to say that this is the best level of participation we've had in years. Over 220 units went out there and did Red Ribbon Week activities in their local communities. And one of them, East Valley Young Marines out of Phoenix, Arizona region, was the winner of this year's Fulcrum Shield Award. This is a Department of Defense award to a youth group committed to drug demand reduction. And I was so excited to see East Valley Young Marines from Phoenix win this year's Fulcrum Shield Award. And the ceremony that they had at the Pentagon was simply outstanding. I'd like to turn it over to one of the Young Marines from East Valley Young Marines who attended the ceremony and received the Fulcrum Shield Award in person. I'm Gunnery Sergeant Tyson Henry. I'm with East Valley Young Marines out of Mesa, Arizona. Um, I'm a sophomore in high school, 15 years old. I've been with the Young Marine program for just over three years now. Accepting the Fulcrum Shield Award was a great honor. Uh, the trip in itself and also getting to go to the Pentagon and receive that from the Department of Defense was uh, one of my best experiences I put at the top of my list and uh, I don't think anything can top it. That is for our efforts in the community to provide information on the dangers of drugs and alcohol to our peers and different organizations that our Young Marines are affiliated with. The message of the program, living a healthy, drug-free lifestyle, would be the Young Marines going out giving presentations and the students or the recipients of the presentations going out, taking the information they learned and really absorbing it into their lifestyle. And no October would be complete without a celebration of the Young Marines' birthday. Young Marines around the country, along with their adult leaders and other supporting organizations, celebrated our 51st birthday since being chartered. And the excitement was palpable at several events that I went to, to include Westover Young Marines with Young Marine Sergeant Major Bacon. You know, we had the opportunity to go down to First Florida Regiment in Tampa during October and really meet with a lot of adult leaders, but a lot of great young Marines. And, and you, your group of young Marines was just doing some phenomenal work over there. Yes, sir, the young Marines, they were very motivated. And a lot of their ideas were extremely similar to our symposium ideas, which just confirmed the direction we wanted to go in was the direction the young Marines wanted to go in. 
that's a definite plus to have that kind of similarity and thought process really kind of confirms the ideas that you want to bring to improve the program over time. And that's one of the strengths of our program is when we do these symposiums, bringing ideas up from the field that young Marines have about how we can make your program, our program better. And in early November, we start celebrating Veterans Day events across the country, each young Marine unit participating in wreath lanes, parades, and color guards. My unit actually participated in a parade with our local Marine Corps League detachment. Supporting Veterans Day is an important part of the Young Marines mission and legacy. The idea that we do citizenship through community service, and particularly community service in support of veterans, is our way of honoring those that have served and sacrificed and continue to know that they're supported by the next generation of leaders and America's youth. As we head into the Christmas season, I know a lot of young Marine units across the country are partnering up with the Marine Corps League and Marine Corps Reserve Centers to support Toys for Tots. I'm really glad to see the young Marines getting out and doing this part of community service as well. Supporting Toys for Tots is a great program that my family's been involved with for years in my time in reserve duty. And I gotta tell you, it makes all the difference in the world that some child somewhere gets something under the tree for Christmas. Young Marines, thank you for that work and effort. Young Marines, as we end the year, we're coming up on the season to sign up for spaces. Right after the first of the year, the clock starts ticking and the computer lines open for you to get registered for an exciting event next summer. But I think one of the more important events that you need to be looking at signing up next year is for leadership schools at every level, both the National Leadership Academy and your regional leadership schools. And I think the best person to emphasize that is gonna be Sergeant Major Bacon. Three years ago, I started in SLS in Virginia Beach. And since then, the leadership academies have changed so much. And the leadership academies have become much more challenging and much more hands-on. Recently, we came out with a ropes course and a map and compass course that's several square kilometers large. You map out a point and you have to find it. You have to put all of your skills that you're learning in those academy to work. And every young Marine that attended the National Leadership Academy walked away a better leader. The leadership schools are gonna be even more important as we come into the coming years, as we have published a new policy for Young Marine of the Year. If you wanna become the Young Marine of the Year at the battalion, regimental, division, or national level, you need to apply to the leadership academies. There's more of an opportunity than ever based on this new policy for you to have the chance to become the Young Marine of the Year. Take advantage of that and go to your leadership academies. And now let's return to the National Cemetery of the Pacific to recap all the other events and adventures we've had here on island. From the Food Network to the Young Marine News Network, we've got our malasadas and we're ready to go. Let's head to the studio and finish this up. Young Marines have been having a great time on island the last few days in between the various events. Maybe you could describe to our viewing audience some of the things they've participated in. So ever since I came in on Saturday, I've been meeting with different Young Marines and they're all extremely enthusiastic and they've been ready for this week to have fun. Yesterday was our fun day. This is the, this is the time the units got to make up their own adventures for the Young Marines. And Young Marines have gone everywhere. The units have been all over this island. They went to the Pearl Harbor Memorial, they were at the climbing mountains, and I was actually able to go with the Oregon Cascadia Marines to the Dole Plantation where they make pineapples fresh. We got some real nice ice cream, a tour of the plantation, and some fresh coffee beans, and that was an awesome opportunity. Many of the units climbed mountains, and one of the biggest mountains and most memorable here on island is Diamond Head, immediately behind us. You know, several units are tackling that expedition up the back of Diamond Head to get a chance to see its history and its impact not only to the Hawaiian culture, but the events surrounding Pearl Harbor. So let's cut to some footage of Sacramento Young Marines as they made the assault on Diamond Head Mountain. There are activities like this that truly make us learn what teamwork is and what it's like to be part of a team that cares for each other and make sure that as a team, we can do anything we want to. We can hike up this hill, we can do a parade, so we can go anywhere. We went up just a dirt hill, had a few stairs, a few tunnels. This is in fact a volcano that is asleep. I felt like we won something. It was truly an experience that we all shared throughout the unit. What made, uh, created the Sacramento Sheriff's Activities League Young Marines is a group of uh, Youth Services deputies from Sacramento, and we've been successful about a year and a half now. We're going to learn some stuff that you can't experience at home. We're going to see a parade. Trips like these are once in a lifetime.
wow, what an adventure. I had a chance to climb it myself the other day, and I will tell you, I haven't done Mount Suribachi, as well as the Kanioi Bay Marine Corps Base Mountain. That is a tough climb, and take plenty of water if you ever have a chance to do it yourself. You know, speaking of climbing mountains, most units got in Saturday night, everyone got settled, and first thing Sunday morning, all the units that were in the barracks of Kebe got a chance to climb that uh, the, the volcanic crater that houses the shooting complex at Marine Corps Base Hawaii. I mean, you led the hike. Well, you know, what did you think about going up there? That was a very interesting hike. I'm actually from Massachusetts, and we have these rock trails. I mean, you can go straight up, nothing in your way. And that started off, we had the grass, the stumps, the rocks, tripping up our young Marines, never mind the fact that it was already muddy from earlier. Yeah, it rain. rain earlier. Yeah, that so. was some thick bush we were climbing up the first half. And it was steep, too. And our young Marines, they held strong the whole way, extremely motivated. Even if they were tired, they were still pushing along. We held tight groups all the way up. Anyway. Yeah, they did. And each group, as they got to the top of the mountain, it was great because as the first group got up, we turned around and we welcomed and cheered on the groups coming in behind us. And then when we got to the top, we had, it's such an impressive view up there. In fact, we have some great footage that was taken from the top of the mountain. Hey, I'm Young Marine Sergeant Major Hannah Witham from DeSoto Young Marines in Florida, and I'm here in Hawaii. Uh, my name is Young Marine Master Sergeant Molly Carino with the Rogue Valley Young Marines in Oregon. I'm Young Marine Master Sergeant Ng, and I'm from Chino Valley. Uh, I'm Young Marine Master Sergeant Smith, I'm also from Chino Valley. Well, what we did is we first started off by waking up in the morning and cleaning up the beach here on uh, Marine Corps Base Hawaii, and then we did a motivational hike up this hill to look, oversee the bay. Uh, it was one of the first attacks on U.S. soil by the Japanese, and uh, it definitely affected this area in Hawaii. To motivate them, we had to push them through, uh, push them mentally and physically. You know, if uh, someone fell, you got to pick them right back up, tell them they can do it. I've seen a lot of teamwork, uh, starting off with the beach cleanup and then helping each other get up here. A lot of people were getting tired. We just kept pushing each other and motivation and all that. Be good. Uh, we saw those little ones, especially those who are starting out, push themselves all the way up here and encouraging their superiors and their older young Marines. And that definitely brought us a lot of morale throughout. Motivation is important because it's all about morale. If some young Marines don't have any morale, then they're not going to have any will to get up this hill. Now this hill was very hard. There was a lot of tall grass, a lot of shrubbery, a lot of slippery rocks. But as we motivated these young Marines and as we cheered them on, we raised their morale and they wanted to get up this hill. I'm looking forward to going to visit the USS Arizona again and being able to meet some of the survivors and their stories. To see the punch bowl, uh, to see all those uh, men and women who lost their lives for things like Pearl Harbor and other tragic events, and just to see uh, how much they've sacrificed for us. The veterans back then, had to, some of them sacrificed their lives, and we have to remember that as Americans and as young Marines. Good. We're here in Hawaii, and we're excited, and we're motivated, and back to you. And it wasn't just the great view from the top. We also had a few words of history from Gunnery Sergeant Byron Moody with Pyramid Rock Young Marines that talked a little bit about the attacks. I mean, what did we learn there? He actually gave us some insight on where the attacks began. We could see the airfield from where we were standing, and he put a lot of emotion to it. He was really passionate about supporting this one message and honoring and celebrating our vets and what they've done for us. You know, you're right. You really could feel the enthusiasm there for getting out that historical message of what happened. You know, discussing the, uh, the first Medal of Honor awardee, uh, during World War II, which was Mr. Finn, was out there defending the flight line at the time. Uh, just, just phenomenal uh, event overall. You know, and then we climbed down the mountain, rain started in, but that does not dampen the festivities for our young Marines, never. And we went right into a luau at Bellows Air Force nearby. I mean, young Marines were having a good time playing, mucking about in the water. Absolutely, sir. Actually, the young Marines, we started off in the ocean, and they were all really excited to be in the ocean. And then it started raining. They, they, was, they weren't stopping. So they, we came back, we ate, and everybody was cold. And I had multiple young Marines come up and ask me, can I go back in? And I'm like, it's cold, but if there's a lifeguard out there, you're welcome to. And we had another group run right back into the ocean. They were so enthusiastic, so happy to be there. That was. What a great way to kick off, you know, that spirit of aloha, that welcome to the islands, having a chance not only to absorb some of the history, to get some physical exercise, and then go out and do some camaraderie with young Marines and our young Marine families and friends being out there doing that luau. You know, we have a special report for the Young Marine News Network. We've ran into an old friend here on island. Mike, yeah. <laughs> how you doing and what have you been up to? I know everyone's wanting to know. Hey, Bill, thanks, and, and thank you for the opportunity to, uh, to be part of Young Marine News Network once again. Uh, love of life and living large has always been my motto, and of course now I've, I finally had a chance to make it, uh, bring it to fruition, and uh, doing things with my kids that I haven't been able to do since the 80s. 
Uh, you know, this is a very time-consuming job. I don't know if you've uh, run into that yet, but I know you've been traveling. I picked up on that. <laughs> and, and for 16 years, it's been constantly on the go. And uh, I promised my wife, God love her, that, uh, you know, once we retired and we moved back to the Pacific Northwest, that, that we'd buy a house and that I would get to finally buy my boat and I'd be able to go hunting with my son. I'd be, go, be able to go fishing and crabbing and, and doing the things that I was raised to do in the Pacific Northwest. And, and now I'm having the chance to do it. Outstanding, Mike. So, boating, fishing, hunting, spending time with family, your wife and your kids. That sounds awesome. Well, you know, it's and, and quite honestly, Kim and I have not had the opportunity. She was as dedicated to her job as right. the director of ELDP for 16 years as I was to the uh, Marines. And so we oftentimes met in passing at the airport. And what a lot of people don't understand is is this is a this is a 24/7 job. Right. And you know, when you're not traveling on the weekends, you're taking phone calls and you're reaching out to people, to, to the volunteers, and God bless our volunteers, you know. Definitely. They, they are the heart and soul of this whole program, and anybody who sees this, I would certainly hope that, that they would consider volunteering for what I think, and I will always think of as, as the most powerful, impactful youth organization in the country. But you know, the other thing too, you talk about volunteering, and you continue to volunteer, uh, you know, you're still helping me out as the, you know, National Executive Director the Emeritus. Emeritus, emeritus. Uh, but you're still serving as the Chairman of the Board of the Foundation. Uh, you're on the board of the Iwo Jima Association, and you're still volunteering in the local community. It kind of, the gift that keeps giving from Mike Kessler. But you know what, you know what I really enjoy is going on to the Yummering Alumni Association's website. Oh, yeah. and, and I hear back from all the alums, and I watch what they're doing. And I, I can't tell you how, how, it, how good it makes me feel to yeah. know that all of these kids who were in our program years ago are still looking to have an impact on what you're doing right now with, with the young Marines who are currently serving in our program. And trying to build the Alumni Association is something uh, big and meaningful. And you know, with Edgar Hupp and his advisory council doing the work that they're doing, this is, this is just really great stuff. Hey, thank you for all you're doing. Thanks, Ralph. Appreciate so it. So glad to see you again. I'm looking forward to seeing all the young Marines at the parade tonight and uh, and, and the volunteers. And in fact, we're going to leave here and we're, we're probably over going over to, to, to Darussi. And I can't wait to see the volunteers. Uh, they've meant so much to us. And, uh, and I know kind of who's over there, so I won't mention any <laughs> names, but I'm looking forward to seeing them and, and the kids as well. And Bill, great job. This is, this is a, a memorable week. And in fact, this is where you and I shook right. hands and kind of parted ways. Last right year after at the, the end yeah. of the parade, we high-fived and, yeah. and away yeah. we go. So again, good luck all right. tonight. And you, to sir. all the young Marines, you know, keep charging, keep up the great work and continue that, that great work you're doing in maintaining a healthy drug-free lifestyle. Hoorah. Moving into our memorial ceremonies here at the National Cemetery of the Pacific, the Punch Bowl. And we have a special section from the Punch Bowl live with our host unit, the Pyramid Yurok Young Marines. We're coming to you live from the National Memorial Cemetery of the Pacific, otherwise known as the Punch Bowl. We're just wrapping up our Remembrance Memorial Ceremony this morning with all the Young Marines. I'm really fortunate that I have the Pyramid Rock Young Marines Unit Commander, Lieutenant Colonel John D. Giovanni, who agreed to stay back for a little bit and talk to us for this episode. John, I just want to say, you know, as the host unit here, Pyramid Rock Young Marines done a great job supporting all the various events, and that started months ago. Could you just tell us a little bit about the planning and some of the events we had this week? Absolutely, Bill. I mean, as you know, we pretty much started the day after you left last December. Right. But uh, so the events we had planned for this week, the uh, Young Marines from around the nation uh, arrived, started beginning to arrive on Saturday the 3rd. We uh, checked them into the barracks on base, about a third of them. The rest are out around town. Uh, the following day, Sunday the 4th, we were able to uh, pay homage to the base and go out and do a little beach cleanup. And in return, um, we were able to walk up the back of Sniper, Sniper Hill, a good little hike that I really wasn't prepared for myself. How about you? I got to tell you, that was pretty challenging. Yeah. After doing Diamond Head and then doing Mount Suribachi last year, Sniper Hill at Kanioe Bay, that, that's a pretty tough one. The first half, you're really going through the brush. Tight. It was. Second half opens up, but there's all those little stumps there to trip you up a little bit. But it really, the payoff, the view at the very top, 
for all of our young Marines. Not only that, but you had one of your staff members there to give them a little bit of history of the base. Absolutely. And then afterwards, uh, the rain held out for us during the hike, but then it came down for our luau, but we still had a great time. The kids enjoyed the beach, had a little bit of a luau, a little uh, barbecue, yeah. burgers and dogs, and, and a little yeah. local teriyaki uh, ribs. And, I, and I'll tell you, you couldn't ask for a more competent and seasoned professional than the 12th Sergeant Major of the Marine Corps, Sergeant Major Overstreet, working the grill. And it was really a coincident of timing that the heaviest rain happened to fall right while we were actually doing the eating portion, but then it tapered off. But you can't dampen the enthusiasm of our young Marines. So many of them have come from places where they've never been to the beach. I think they uh, kept the lifeguards really busy and observant with how many young Marines were out in the water in the pouring rain having a great time. Then uh, Monday everybody got a break. They were able to go around the island themselves and see a little bit of the history here and, and the uh, uh, island festivities. And then today we started off with the punch bowl uh, wreath laying ceremony. And we had a wonderful day yesterday for the day off, an opportunity for everyone to get a sunburn, hopefully not very many. Uh, but just a great opportunity that continued in today with wonderful weather and a slight breeze uh, for our young Marines while they were coming out here to memorialize the service and sacrifices of those during Pearl Harbor and afterwards. You know, tomorrow morning, many of us are going to go visit the, uh, the host base, Marine Corps Base Hawaii. We'll be doing the clipper ceremony tomorrow morning early around the same time, well, exactly the same time Absolutely. as the Pearl Harbor uh, day ceremonies will be going on over at Pearl Harbor. I know a lot of our young Marines are going to stay there at the Clipper ceremony because it's really near the barracks they're staying at and then get out for a little bit of the day before we have to turn to down in Fort Tarusi to get ready for the big parade. Tomorrow afternoon, starting at 3 o'clock, we'll uh, all be there ready to go to see the kickoff for the Pearl Harbor Remembrance Ceremonies Parade. For the parade itself, though, we're expecting over 60 of the Pearl Harbor survivors to be here represented in the parade. And the young Marines will be there to support carrying as usually the capital ship banners, as well as supporting other remembrance items that are gonna be as part of that parade ceremony. And, and we're really just looking forward to, to being there, participating and supporting these great remembrance. As I understand it, Gary Sinise will be here and he will be the, uh, the honorary grand marshal of the parade. And uh, we look forward to having a chance to interact with him as well during this parade. But I really, in closing, just with all the events this week, you know, you really can't, you can do a lot of things for National Headquarters, but you got to have people on the ground that are the day on, stay on support. And we can't thank Pyramid Rock Young Marines, not just Lieutenant Colonel G. Giovanni, who's representing the unit, but the 11 other registered adults, the 29 young Marines out there that have been working in support of this from the very beginning and have been just excellent hosts. Really, the spirit of Aloha, the spirit of Mahalo. John, thank you so much for everything you've done this week for us. Thank you as well. And we can't take the credit ourselves. The bases have supported us. Um, all the young Marine families have as well, along with uh, Marine Force of the Pacific. As everybody starts going home on the 8th, there'll be a handful of young Marines that get to stick around, and they're distinguished guests of Lieutenant General Berger of Marine Forces Pacific to see a showing of the Sands of Iwo Jima uh, down at Waikiki Beach. It's going to be a good time. That will be a great time for our young Marines. Well, I'll tell you, that's just such a full week of activities that encompasses all the various aspects of what our program is all about. Signing off for the Young Marine News Network from the National Cemetery of the Pacific. Aloha! You know, it was just a powerful ceremony. You can tell we're really blessed to have units like Pyramid Rock Young Marines out there that support us wherever we go with various events we have around the country. We know the Young Marines families out there to make something special whenever we try to do a national level event. And we can't do them without them or you making that happen. And you know, the last event we have is the parade ceremony. And we're gonna have some great footage of that for you now so that you can feel some of the excitement and enthusiasm as we celebrate those survivors of Pearl Harbor and pay them their due respects on this anniversary with so many people lining the streets to see it happen. This has been a true honor for me. We can never take for granted the price paid, nor the sacrifices made all those years ago to ensure that tyranny would be defeated. After the devastating attack on Pearl Harbor for the United States and for the world, as we went forward to stand against the Japanese and Nazi war machines, there were only two possible outcomes. Freedom would win, 
or freedom would lose. But above all else, that morning was pride. Our men responded magnificently. Everybody distinctively did the right thing at the right time without any uh, caution about their own lives or liberty. So overall was pride. There are approximately 300 young Marines here today. Most of them are marching in the parade. We then have young Marines holding the banners for each one of the fallen heroes. And we have our young Marines over here. They're holding the banners for each band and different banners for the companies that sponsored today. The young Marines showing off our proud sponsors. and representing and honoring the sunken USS Utah. Quoting them, we may be small, but we are big in spirit. We're Semper Fi, always faithful. The young Marines platoon in front of us here tonight, one and all. The military order of the Purple Hearts was chartered by Congress way long ago. All the members were qualified by having been injured in combat, fraternalism, and the preservation of America's military history. Most importantly, through veteran service, they provide comfort and assistance. Look at their banners, ladies and gentlemen, as these honorable youth honor those who gave the full measure of their devotion to you and our country. What a great day to be out on the parade, marching through the Kalakaua Avenue, the streets of Honolulu with our young Marines honoring our veterans on the 75th anniversary of Pearl Harbor. Come again, what a moving night, what a great opportunity for young Marines to show their support with 33 units from 15 states around the country, including Pyramid Rock Young Marines here in Hawaii. We really had a great turnout and a great amount of support for the events this week in Hawaii. And that wraps up another great edition of Young Marine News Network, live here from beautiful Honolulu. Remember, stay motivated, stay engaged, and keep living that healthy, drug-free lifestyle.